Good afternoon, Presiding Officer, Mr. Chu Xiaobing, SUTD President, Professor Thomas Magnanti, members of the SUTD Board of Trustees, distinguished guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. To the graduates, I'm honored to be here delivering your commencement speech. When I was your age, I graduated from a British university. It is part of the difference in outlook of life that the British calls it graduation and the Americans call it commencement. The British look at university as the culmination of many years of hard work, whereas the Americans look at university as the start of life. I'm actually happy that SUTD is following an American style. I think it is good to look forward. So, in giving a commencement speech to you, I guess what I should be doing is to give you uh, some view of what life may be like after university and after you commence your life and career. I guess I'm essentially having to give you some advice as to how to look at life and your career, even though personally I am uncomfortable giving life advice. I, I would like to share with you today the Japanese concept of ikigai, so loosely translated as the reason for being and how this concept has helped me to make sense of the experiences in my life and career. If you find your ikigai, or your reason for being, then you will find satisfaction and meaning in your life. My wish is that after you understand this concept and the part they have played in my life, you would be better able to reflect on your own life as you comment on it after today. So what is ikigai? Simply put, ikigai is the source of value in one's life and the things that make one's life worthwhile. We are likely to find our life more worthwhile if we do what we love. If you take a look, Ikigai is depicted by a Venn diagram of four intersecting circles. What you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you are good at. We are inclined to think that life is more worthwhile if we do what we love. Many people's favorite commencement speech is actually Steve Jobs' commencement speech to Stanford, where his message to the students was to discover your passion, to do what you love to do, and to follow your dreams. But unfortunately, I think for many of us who have families to feed and bills to pay, we cannot just drop everything on a whim or because of passion. Many of us have to make a living because others depend on us. But beyond just making a good living, there is something else that doesn't feel quite right about just completely following our own passion. When we only care about our own passion, we only focus on what we love and want and what makes us feel good. In some ways, it feels very self-serving. On the other hand, we often want to do things or take on a career that is about what the world needs and what makes our work or job purposeful. But is it enough to be passionate about what we do, to be well paid for it, and to benefit society if we are not good at our jobs? So you have various permutations to think through. In this case, you are passionate about what you do, you are good at what you are doing, and what you do benefits society and the world, but you are not well paid for it. In this case, you may feel a certain satisfaction in life, but it may not be sufficient to make you completely happy. Or maybe your family may not be completely happy. Most of us wish to live a materially comfortable life. But what many of us want even more is to provide wealth for our family and children, because we feel a sense of duty towards them. Another permutation could be this. You're passionate about what you do, you're well paid for it, and what you do benefits society and the world but unfortunately, you're not very good at what you do. In this case, you would feel a sense of unease because you're probably a, you probably have this feeling that you're a charlatan riding on your luck in your job. Next one would be, you're good at what you do, you're well paid for it, and what you do is useful for the world and is what the world needs, but you unfortunately have no passion for the job, you do not love the job, could possibly even dislike it. In this case, you would feel rather empty. 
Lastly, you're passionate about what you do, well paid for it, good at it, but it does not really benefit society. In this case, even if on the surface, you could feel very smart, you could well be driving a Porsche, a Ferrari, but inside you there will be a sense of uselessness or lack of sense of purpose. If you look at your friends, parents, brothers, relatives, sisters, you could probably think of different people whom you can populate in the different parts of the Venn diagram. Where would you end up? When I was your age, I joined the Air Force to fly. It was out of passion. Moreover, to defend Singapore is a noble mission and to have a strong SAF and Air Force were clearly things that Singapore then critically needed and still need now. What I did not know at the time when I joined was whether I'll be any good as a pilot. When I joined in the mid-80s, being a pilot in the Air Force also wasn't particularly well-paying. It was only in the early to mid 1990s when the Singapore government moved to benchmark public sector pay to those in the private sector that our salaries were suddenly jacked up. And by the mid-1990s, I had become a rather good fighter pilot, good enough to be one of the youngest fighter squadron commanders ever in the Air Force. And so in the mid-90s, I was in this happy state where I loved what I did. I was good at what I did. I was well paid for it. And I knew that what I did was important to society. It was therefore an immensely satisfying and meaningful time in my life. I was in this sweet spot of, I guess, right in the middle where the four Venn diagrams intersected. But unfortunately, life isn't always smooth sailing and you sort of move in and out of, different, of the different circles and we can't always remain in the center sweet spot. What can we do if we feel one or more of the circles are missing from our lives? If you feel you're not good enough at your job, well, you can always work harder, read more, take courses to get better. If somehow what you do doesn't feel very useful to the world, well, I guess you could consider changing jobs. On the surface, these are simple things to do. But what really makes it difficult, and, or rather what makes it possible to find a path, what really makes it possible if you start to move out of the circles to try to move back into a sweet spot, is to find a passion and a commitment to change and to get yourself back into the center. Developing this passion requires getting out of your comfort zone to try new things, and developing this commitment requires greed and determination. Both will not stop regardless of age. So be grateful when things are going well, but never be too comfortable and retain that passion and that determination and commitment so that you can always get back into the sweet spot if you do come out of it. How does Ikigai apply to you? I think by now you will know how good you are at engineering. And my suspicion is that many of you will be rather good because SUTD is a world-class university with a syllabus and a faculty to match. And between them, they will have given you all the right resources to have developed into a very good engineer. Of course, whether you are good at it also largely depends on how hard you have worked at it, and it is to some degree under your control. Do you love engineering? My suspicion is that many of you would. Engineering is one of the most difficult faculties to be in and one of the toughest degrees to pursue. And if you have chosen to do so, it must be because you have certain love for it. But being able to do what the world needs and what you can be paid for, well, that requires some luck. Singapore's economic development has gone through a few big waves. The first big wave in the 60s to 80s saw labour-intensive industries that soaked up unemployment where our skilled but cheap labour was an advantage and MNCs located here to gain from it. It was also the time when engineers were important because Singapore was building up its fiscal infrastructure massively in housing, airport, ports, transport, water, sewage. This was an era in which engineers were critical to Singapore's success and when our foundation as a technocratic society was laid, with many of our cabinet ministers and permanent secretaries being technically engineering trained. This has changed in the 90s to the 2000s, when Singapore grew in a global financial hub and a global services hub. Other expertise, such as financial expertise, business administration, were more critical, and the engineering faculty dropped in its relative attractiveness. But in the last two years, as 
across the government and society as we have completed various reviews of how Singapore can continue to remain economically competitive over the next 20 to 30 years, we have seen clearly the need for Singapore to grow deep engineering expertise, in particular in advanced additive engineering and branches of engineering related to the digital economy. So the Singapore government has given renewed emphasis on engineering and salaries for both hardware and software engineers have increased significantly. It used to be the case that good engineers had to give up their engineering work to take on better paying managerial positions. But these days, there are engineering jobs that are specialists in nature that pays just as much, if not more, than supervisory jobs. Similar to a bank when traders can be paid more than the managers, you have firms now where the CIO can be paid more than the CEO of the organization. You can therefore continue to indulge in your passion without necessarily sacrificing material rewards. This makes it therefore a truly great time to graduate as an engineer and to be an engineer. And you have every chance of hitting the right sweet spot in the center. In summary, most of you have probably started on the right footing, pursuing what you love and doing it well. And you are also fortunate to be graduating and commencing on your career and life at a time when Two thing, the two things that are not under your control, whether your job pays well and whether you, what you do is what society needs are to your favour. Next 20 to 30 years is likely to be an era where Singapore will greatly need your engineering expertise and where your engineering expertise would enable you to make a real impact and make a real difference to society. Vested in each of you is the power to dream, to create and to make society a better place by exploiting technology more effectively. So as you walk on stage to receive your scrolls, not only will you be closing a chapter of your life, but you will also be embarking on a new and exciting journey ahead. I sincerely hope that each of you will find your ikigai, find your own meaning in what you do. Congratulations once again.